What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to cover some of the best setups in the stock market right now and all the important information you need to know about. Looking at the market today, it was a pretty good day overall. Tesla exploded to the upside. Apple had a decent day. And even if we just look at the heat map overall, we saw a lot of stocks have some decent moves. Some stocks fell as well, like Amazon, Google, and some others. So we're definitely going to make sure to cover those as well. But overall, we're starting to see increased increased momentum when we're starting to see the market slowly heat up again, which means more opportunities all week long. Looking at the market today, Tom, what are you seeing and what do we need to know about? Yeah, it was a very crazy day today, Mike. You know, very early on, we saw a big explosion to the upside and it looked like a lot of stocks were going to be, you know, starting to run back up. You know, we started to see like Apple push back to the upside and open and a lot of stocks had some very big explosions, but a lot of these stocks that exploded ran right up into very key resistance levels and the s p 500 is sitting right on 400 dollars. we actually ran up slightly above 400 today it looks like on trading view they're looking like it got up to like 400 dollars and 22 cents that's why it's always important to give or take you know maybe 25 cents whenever a stock is 400 dollars with the resistance but you can see that major resistance up there at 400 dollars, mike this is going to be very very important for the next few days and few weeks Going forward, in my opinion, even if we end up breaking 400, it might end up holding up as a very big support. So $400, Mike, is going to be huge. We did have some earnings today with United Airlines. Looks like they're popping up a little bit in after hours, and we will talk about that in a little bit. But Mike, that spy was insane, and we are just at crucial, crucial levels. And, you know, while the market was overall I would say green, you know, today a lot of stocks were green. We did have a lot of stocks fall down. Like you said, you know, even Netflix ended up down in the red by quite a bit. Boeing was down. Uh, the banks fell down a little bit like Bank of America. So it wasn't all green here, but that SPY was insane. Yeah, so looking at the SPY over like the past couple weeks or so, for the most part, it's been really, really good. But Tom, some horrible news just came out from CNBC the other day. Looking at CNBC, we can see Jim Cramer sees bullish signs starting to emerge in the stock market. Not good. <laughs> Honestly, like this is like a really, really bad sign. I would not be surprised if we end up testing that lower support, Tom. Cramer's been, uh, he's, he's had a rough couple of years. Yeah, he definitely has. I mean, look at some of these numbers up here, Mike. The short Cramer uh, index is up 21%. That is insane to see. I mean, Look at that. The pro Kramer, uh, they're down 25% there on that index as well. So, Mike, I cannot believe how wrong Kramer has been on so many fronts, especially the past couple of years. He might have done well here and there, but for the most part, Mike, he has been dead wrong about a lot of things, and he's called the tops on a lot of things as well. But let's look at this spy, like you said, maybe even go out to a daily chart because we are at a very crucial point on the trend line as well. And to see him say this right whenever we're hitting off the $400 resistance, off this trend line, whenever Apple's hitting off their trend line as well, kind of confirming off of it down here. Man, I don't know, Mike, I'm scared. I'm gonna be shaking in my boots here for the next couple of weeks with this statement. <laughs> like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I was feeling really good about the market over like the past couple of weeks. You know, we saw so many stocks booming up, and I saw that news article. I was like, damn, like, <laughs> like, like, can't we just have the market run up for like at least a couple more weeks? But we'll see what happens, though. You know, to be fair, just like you said, Tom, like, we're right at like a very, very key resistance level, not only on like that downwards trend for the spy that we've been in all of 2022, but we also have that giant resistance right at four hundred dollars so it's like it's definitely possible to see a break through that but it's like you know we're at like a tough point right now and we, we need we need some like really solid momentum if the market's truly going to break through break above this resistance level yeah definitely we do actually have some economic uh stuff coming up tomorrow i guess you'd call it data we have the ppi data set to release at 8 30 a.m eastern time one hour before the market opens along with retail sales numbers so these could affect the market a little bit tomorrow morning so you know you guys can can uh, screenshot this if you want to see everything coming out tomorrow looks like bullard is also going to speak at 9 30 a.m he's a pretty influential person in the fed there so definitely watch out a lot of speakers tomorrow as well but mike that is a very key resistance at 400 and i will say even looking at like intraday support here 
It looks like there was a lot of retest down here, really close to 397. And with the way that we're getting all these like rejections here off of like 39880 to 399, I'm going to really be watching this 397 support. If we break below there, I'll be watching for a push down towards 396. Maybe that'll be a nice uh, first profit target. Then I'll look for 395 after that, right below uh, 395.50 there. So hopefully we see a nice move in either direction, Mike. And I just can't wait. You know, hopefully we can get a nice breakout. And I will say, you know, we're going to have some big earnings coming up over the next few weeks. And that could really affect the market as well. I know Apple's actually set to report next week, which is going to be huge. Yeah, definitely a good point there. And, you know, just like you said with the SPY, like right around 397 for support should be uh, pretty uh, key. So keep that in mind. And, you know, of course, the levels you mentioned for a possible break below 397 will also be important. But what I've also noticed, like over the past couple of weeks and months, not only with SPY, but just other stocks in general, is we've been seeing a lot of stocks, including SPY, including the S&P 500, continuously making higher lows and in some case higher highs as well which is normally a bullish sign so it's like we have a lot of like good things happening in the short term for the market um but at the same time it's like that resistance ahead will be pretty tough and like like i said a couple minutes ago like we'll need a lot of momentum to really break through this level and just like you said like earnings can be that catalyst yeah it can and talking about earnings mike later in the week we even have some big stuff coming up here with netflix and Procter and Gamble on Thursday. I don't know. I don't think that Netflix necessarily has enough power to make us make the whole entire market blast up, but you never know. You know, it's one of those bigger tech stocks. And if it goes well enough, I think it definitely could pull some of those other tech stocks up with it. So who knows? Maybe they'll report some good numbers. But I know next week, we're going to get some uh, bigger companies starting to come in. And I think that we'll start to see the market move a little bit more next week. Um, but I still think that we can see some bigger moves this week, Mike. I just, I personally do not think we're going to break 400 this week. I'm, I'm really just going to be watching for that move to the downside. And I hate to say that, but, you know, in the short term, we've been on quite the uptrend. And I wouldn't be surprised if we fell back down for a day or two. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, what's really good, in my opinion, is when you have some of these uh, crazy companies like Tesla, when they're back to having, you know, 7% updates, you know, I know Tesla had a brutal 2022, but so far in 2023, it's been pretty amazing. And, you know, it's not like it's just slowly grinding higher, like it's having some decently powerful candles on a day to day basis. And it's like, when you have companies like Tesla up seven or eight or 10% in a day, um, a lot of times it has a good effect, not only just on that stock, of course, but like the whole market and just like the whole, uh, I guess you could say tech industry overall. Yeah, exactly. I honestly thought the market would be up a little bit more today, Mike, because that was a very big breakout with Tesla. And man, there were so many stocks in the green. But when I go back and I look at that heat map, man, there was also a lot of red, especially like in the financial sector, Amazon and the retailers were red. So while we did have some of those tech stocks like NVIDIA and Tesla up so much, I guess the other ones just kind of hindered it a little bit today. But I would say overall, even on the SPY, it was an okay day, Mike. I know we ended up red in the in the end, but you know, early on there was a lot of positive momentum up into that resistance. And I know a lot of traders actually got in on some calls pretty early on. I know even like Christian uh, banked on some Apple calls there at the beginning. There we go. So what else do we have going on in the market and what do we need to know? Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about maybe UAL, Mike. I know UAL is actually a pretty big stock. They had some earnings today and after hours, they ended up beating quite a bit on that EPS that came in at 2.46 versus 2.10. The revenue also beat by a 0.2 billion there, Mike. So not too bad. You know, the revenue came in at 12.4 versus 12.2. Um, and it looks like that they're actually doing better because they, they're seeing increased demand, Mike, even though that the rates or pretty much the cost to travel is going up. Uh, so pretty much they're charging more for airfare, for tickets, obviously. Uh, the price of jet fuel has obviously went up a lot the past few years and everything like that. It's been causing the prices of everything to go up. As we know, inflation has been insane uh, over the past few years or over the past couple of years, I should say. And I And I know that UAL is a pretty big airline. Um, I'm hoping to maybe see these airlines continue up in it tomorrow. I noticed that they ran all the way up to like 54, 5430 in after hours. Now they're dipping back down a little bit, but I know Delta had a positive report last week and actually dipped down. So 
I'm going to really look for some of these airlines to possibly continue up here because they were really on quite the uptrend before these recent earnings came out. I'll tell you, like, I've really been considering UAL for a short position, you know, like a short term play. You look at it on a daily chart and it has ran up like better than any other stock for the most part over like the past two weeks or so. Um, it has lows right around like $37 a share um, from the start of 2023. And it has highs all the way up to like 5250. So it's like, that's a really big run up in such a short time span. And these intraday candles have been uh, pretty strong too. So it's like, it has a ton of momentum right now, which makes me not urgent to get into the trade, but it's like definitely on my watch list for like a potential short play. Yeah. And they just had these positive earnings. And as we know, the earnings can go, they can honestly go crazy. You know, sometimes stocks fly up with good earnings. And sometimes, you know, like in this case, Mike, with UAL, we might see him fly up here for a day or two and then start to come back over just because it's getting so overbought and some sellers might start to, you know, sell as we get to some of these key resistances, like $55 and then up here around 60. I'll definitely be watching some of those bigger levels on UAL. And then Mike, uh, we also still have some big stuff that came out with Apple today, believe it or not. I will say they had some new stuff come out with their macbook pro and they announced their new mac mini which is very interesting they're going to have support for the new m2 chips with these computers um apple stock did pretty well today mike i didn't really see this news you know make them explode up too much or anything it seemed like they overall kind of followed like the spy like they flew up early on then kind of consolidated but they did close up a lot better than most stocks today just be really careful this like 137 resistance and then 140 is going to be pretty huge all right, sounds good. So now I want to get into some good setups for tomorrow and the rest of the week. So one stock I've been watching very closely is SE. So this company had some pretty crazy trades with it lately. Around $3 million went into the 70 strike call options for February. Basically, we have some whale betting that this stock is about to boom in the short term. Um, it's oversold on the daily chart and it usually has good runs. And what I really like about it in the short term is that the momentum has been really awesome and it's moving up uh, even when some other stocks are kind of just flat or even struggling a little bit. So overall, it's uh, one of the top stocks on my radar for the short term and it's uh, definitely being watched to the upside. Yeah, I love all these stocks right now. They're all flying up and they just have so much momentum right now. Like SE is another one, you know, just it's had so many amazing green days in a row here. Hopefully it can keep up this momentum and Keep pushing higher. It definitely kept going today. I'll be honest, Mike. I've been waiting for a pullback out of a lot of stocks, but they keep proving me wrong, and they, and they just keep going up here. There's been some amazing momentum in the market over the past couple of days. Uh, but my first stock is actually going to be Apple, which we actually just talked about a little bit. Um, but I, I just want to mention with Apple, they just ran up a lot today, and the SPY hit a major resistance at 400, and Apple is bouncing right off of a key trend line that I've been watching for a long, long time. This trend line has actually been kind of like working out. Wow, I, you got to go really far back for this one, all the way back to uh, September of 2020. This is like where the bottom was here. It's kind of been following this trend line the whole time. If we keep rejecting off of this back to the downside, I will watch for a play back down. I saw a good intraday support here right around like 135.25. So if we break below there, I'll watch for a play down, kind of like with the SPY, I'm waiting for them to fall below 397. Perfect. Um, another stock I'm watching pretty closely is good old Zoom. So Zoom is right all, or I guess you could say right around that $65 support. It bounced off of it in a pretty strong way recently. And it has room in terms of resistance all the way up to 72 and then 75. Zoom is a stock that's very oversold. Uh, it had amazing, amazing moves back in 2020. And over the past couple of years, it's been a little bit more of like a slower moving company, slower moving stock. But right now it's at a key support level. I'm definitely watching it very, very closely to the upside. Um, I think right now is just the risk reward ratio on this one's awesome. You know, even in the event the stock breaks down, you know, you can probably just cut losses right around like that $65 support. But, you know, if it rips up, you you know, you could, you know, start to trim maybe around 75, maybe 80 or even higher. So I definitely like the setup. 
Yeah, I like it a lot too. I'll tell you, Mike, I was actually going to call out Zoom today as well, and you beat me to it, but it was, uh, it's awesome. I love this setup as well. I love this recent test of support around like 67 to 68. I love that double bottom down here and those, those wicks on that daily chart. Um, whenever you zoom in a lot, I know zoom looks crazy guys. Like whenever you look at it on the, on the longer term daily chart, it looks crazy. But whenever you zoom in a little bit, you know, it looks a little bit more manageable. And I really like those wicks down here, uh, at that, at that $68 support. So hopefully we keep seeing zoom bounce up. I love that support down there. Um, but Mike, as far as stocks going up, you know, zoom's a growth stock. Lately, we've been seeing the spy, you know, today it's bouncing off that big resistance at 400. I'm really going to be keeping my eyes on the US dollar here over the next couple of months. You know, we've been actually ripping to the downside with the US dollar ever since like the beginning of November. We've been seeing a big drop off to the downside. So I don't know, Mike, you know, I'm going to be watching the dollar if it starts to pop back up a little bit and maybe come back up and retest 105 or 106. I think that might make the spy and make the overall market start to move back to the downside a little bit more. So I know we're watching that big support on the SPY at 397. So if we do see that dollar continue to pop up tomorrow, that might give us even more confirmation to maybe, you know, go ahead and play this SPY to the downside. So I wanted to go ahead and throw that out there, especially with us being at resistance right now and the dollar being just so oversold. All right. Sounds good. Well, it is now time for the momentum plays. With the first one today, we have TSM to the upside. TSM, I love this one, Mike. I'm really glad they're continuing up still after that amazing earnings report from last week. But go ahead and make them break the high of day right around 89.70. All right. And then with the last one, we have SQ or block also to the upside. Good old square here. That was a very explosive close. Some of these growth stocks did amazing today, Mike. Go ahead and make them break out above 75.25. All right, now with the last one, we have Tesla, but we need both directions. TSLA, another very explosive move, Mike. Mike, I, do you not like Tesla or something? Why Why are we doing both directions today? <laughs> so let's go <laughs> oh, ahead and that's... do 132.50 to the upside. And I'll say, Mike, if they fall back under 130 even, that could be a really good opportunity too. Yeah, so Tesla's been crazy, as we all know. It's definitely one of those volatile stocks, but actually, Tom, what I like about Tesla, especially like more than any other stock, is like Tesla is it, it's very rare for Tesla to have a, a day where it just does nothing, right? So it's like either it just explodes the upside in a crazy way or it just tanks down brutally. So like that's like what I really, really like about Tesla than like any other stock. So I wanted to make sure we had both levels just in case tomorrow was a red day. Yeah, I could see that being, I if we do fall and we end up falling under 130, I could see that being a very good opportunity there. So I feel you, Mike, always be ready for both directions. And I think, uh, I think that's going to be a smart way to go about it tomorrow. All right, there we go. So we're watching Tesla for potential day trade to the downside tomorrow. Only if it breaks below the level Tom listed. We're also watching it for that potential play to the upside tomorrow. Only if it breaks above that upside level. We're also watching SQ and TSM for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow. Only if they break above the levels Tom listed. But it is now time for the big money. million trade of the day. We are looking at QTRX. QTRX. So basically, this is a healthcare company. Um, Someone put $2.42 million into the $12.50 strike call options for February 17th of 2023. This is a bullish trade where the smart money wants the stock to go as high as possible. The higher the stock goes, the more millions they will make. Uh, Looking at the stock in the short term, uh, they've been on on a very explosive uptrend over the past couple months. Um, Over like the past couple years, it's been pretty tough though. Um, Overall, you know, it's not a bad trade. Um, I have like, uh, I don't think it's a bad trade. I just like some other, some of the other uh, big money trades a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of money in this though. And I will say it is in the money as well, which is nice. You know, they, they're in that, that 1250 strike, which is good. And there's 2.4 million in here. So it looks pretty good. You know, it does worry me. Sometimes these pharmaceutical stocks or, or biotech stocks, they can go insane, Mike. I know uh, sometimes that these insiders know that maybe they're going to be releasing a certain drug or maybe some new therapeutics or something like that, then 
then we might start to see, you know, this stock start to maybe gap to the upside or have some big moves or something. So who knows? I'll definitely be keeping it on the radar though, until we get to maybe the beginning of February, maybe, you know, February 10th or something like that, then I might quit watching it. But I think it's definitely worth the watch here, especially considering how, uh, how short term this is too. You know, it's only like a month out right now, which is pretty crazy. You know it. And if you guys want to get access to these big money trades every single day before the market closes, definitely make sure to check out that first link in the description in the comments down below. Uh, in, in addition to that, you'll get access to our sniper bot plays, our hybrid bot plays, swing plays, a great community with a bunch of great people and traders in there, and a bunch of other tools that you won't find anywhere else. So definitely make sure to check out that first link in the description in the comments down below. Our sniper bot's been doing great so far today even the free sniper bot play was alerted it was an amazon put play alerted at 222 dollars each and it popped all the way up to 297 dollars each so definitely make sure to check it out it's gonna be that first link in the description in the comments down below it's great if you're into short-term trading especially options trading but tom back to the video the market's crazy right now. As we all know, we're starting to see it heat back up, which is awesome to see. Do you have any final thoughts or anything else you want to, uh, uh, I guess you could say, touch on before we end the video? Yeah, I feel like I've said this a thousand times, Mike, but $400 resistance tomorrow, guys. Watch it so closely over the next few days. I think that there's a lot of opportunities. I mean, Mike, even me and you were talking earlier and we were like, man, I wish we would have fired some puts off there right at 400 because, man, you know even just it's just a big psychological level. Anytime you hit like ten dollars or a hundred or a hundred and fifty or two hundred, like those like even levels sometimes just are huge areas of resistance. There's a lot of sellers that place orders at those levels, and man, it's just uh, it's usually just like a big area of contention on these stocks. So really watch it over the next few days. I'll be watching that three ninety seven support for a play tomorrow. Hopefully we can get in, Mike, and make a. Uh, Nice move to the downside. And I will say, guys, if you guys end up doing well on this one tomorrow, come back and let us know in the comments and we'll uh, we'll see how maybe uh, some of your plays went. There we go. Also, I want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, Yardens, in the Stocked Up Discord. Thank you so much for your activity. Tom and I really appreciate it and make sure to keep it up. But overall, tomorrow should be a pretty good day. Like I said, we're starting to see some increased volatility, which is always awesome to see. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. When you subscribe, you'll see our videos more often. And definitely make sure to check out that first link in the description in the comments down below for daily short-term options plays. Besides that, let's have an amazing rest of the week.